Hello, today I will be demonstrating how to colour gold using this beautiful design of a steampunk unicorn by Sam Deacon from Colouring Heaven issue 97, Steampunk Animal Special. What I'm going to be showing you today is how to create a gold effect but without using a gold pencil or gel pen. And I will be using Caran d'Ache Pablo pencils. I have enlarged the image slightly uh, so that you can see what I'm doing more clearly. So I'm gonna start off by demonstrating what the problem is with a gold pencil or gel pen. So I'm just gonna do like I come to colour an area. So this is a Caran Dash Pablo gold pencil. So I'm colouring an area with that. And then I also have a gold a metallic, I can't see who that's by, but uh, anyway, it's a gold gel pen. Now, what you can see with both of these areas is that they produce a very flat effect. So they're good for covering very small areas of gold, but if you want to colour a larger area or an object and make it look three-dimensional, it's actually better to use coloured pencils. Just to show you an example, this is a drawing I did of a creature that I found at Dingle's Fairground Museum in Devon. So you can see here that I've created a very shiny gold effect in three different sorts of gold. So we've got uh, reddish up here and uh, sort of yellowy greeny around here and then a greenish around here. And I've created a very shiny three-dimensional effect, but just with using coloured pencils. And one thing I've done is by putting in these areas of shine, rather than doing a smooth blend, I've actually used quite a hard edge around some of these areas, which gives the uh, impression of something very shiny. Now, as I've said in previous tutorials, when you're trying to achieve a particular effect, it is a good idea, if you can, to find examples that you can use as inspiration. I did find it quite hard to find a photo of a gold horse, but here is one that I did manage to find on Pixabay. Uh, and again, you can see here, there is uh, a lot of graded blending, but also these bright areas of shine as well. And we're going from the darkest areas up into this nearly white. And if you actually sit and analyse the colours that you're looking at here, um, the dark areas are really kind of browns, dark browns, lighter browns, then going into a yellow here, a pale yellow. Now we've actually got some grey coming in here, which I haven't actually included in my example. So the overall gold effect is built up by a combination of different colours. So I'm now going to start on the image and the first thing to do when starting to colour an image is to decide where your light source is going to be. Now when I'm colouring a figure in profile like this I usually choose a source above and in front of it so that the light is illumining the face and the front end. This has the effect of focusing the viewer's attention on the face and the front of the figure rather than its back. Of course, if you particularly wanted to focus people's attention on the horse's tail and its um, rump, then you light it from there. But I'm gonna be lighting it from here and that would mean that the light source is going to be up here, so it's above and to the right. This artist has actually identified the areas that he would have shadowed and he's done it with these dots. But fortunately, he's actually chosen the same light source as I have. So I will be able to incorporate his dots into my shading. Now I'm going to start with the lightest shade, which in this case is yellow number 010. I usually colour from light to dark. 
Some people prefer to work the other way round, but I like to make sure that the areas of highlight are reserved right from the beginning. And also, it's easier to put on another layer of colour to make things darker than to take off a layer of colour to make things lighter. So I'm going to start off at the top end. Is that a top end? The ear end of the horse uh, with the lightest yellow. So I'm actually going to start with this area of the mane. So I'm making sure that I'm leaving some reasonably large white areas to be the highlights and the shine. So I'm putting in colour here. I'm leaving this middle bit light because that's where the light is going to be hitting. Then as I move round, the light is going to be coming down from here. So when I move to these lower areas, the light is actually going to be striking these metal bars, which is going to be causing a shadow to fall over this section. And that's going to happen even more so here. So as we move round, there's going to be less light area. So the whole area is going to get darker. Now I'm going to do my next layer of colour, which is golden ochre, 033. This is a brownie, a brownie gold colour. And what I'm going to do is I'm putting it in the areas that are further away from the highlighted bit. Then I'm going to work my way through the different darknesses because as we saw from the example that we were looking at of the golden horse, the darker areas of gold are actually made up of shades of brown. So this is ochre 035. I might find as I go on that I can skip some of these stages of colour and get the effect by blending instead. I'll see how I get on. Then I'm going to use darker colour again. This is cinnamon 055. A hint of cinnamon in here. Next is Chestnut 057. I'm not going to put any on these first sections. Just a little bit here. And a lot of this one. And finally, the very darkest colour that I'm going to use is Umber 049. I'm just going to put a little touch here around the edges. So what you'll find is even if you just put a little bit of the very dark colour around the edge, it really has the effect of making it pop out and looking more, much more three-dimensional. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little bit more of the yellow colour, perhaps here and then here. And then I'm going to, with the cinnamon, I'm actually just going to put a few, just a couple of lines here, what I found is that by putting in the old line like this, it somehow helps to accentuate, I need to be a bit darker there, accentuate the shine and make it look a bit more like something that's metallic rather than something that's organic. So now I'm going to do some more work on the horse's neck and I'm going to use really a similar technique to what I've been describing. But on this part of the neck, we've got a line drawn in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I'm going to take that as being a area of slight darker. And then I'm going to, so I'm going to put the area of highlight here, just below the line, like this. And I'm going to follow it from one section to the next. 
So we're going to get an area of shine that goes across it. And I'm going to give, make it a hard edged, hard edged shine. So it's probably going to finish as it tips away from the light. It's probably going to finish about there, let's say. And the way that I'm shading, because of what I said about the line somehow helping it to look more metallic, I'm generally using directional strokes rather than circular ones. So I'm going to put another area of shine on this part of the neck. So I'm going to do the shading as I did before. I might try skipping the yellow ochre and going straight in with the ochre. See how we get on with that. So I'm going to do this line and do the shading very similar way to what I did in the area above it. I think I need to make the yellow look a little bit more gold. So I'm going to go over it with this appropriately called golden yellow, O2O. Hmm, that's giving us a bit of a richer, a richer colour. And then the chestnut. Perhaps I will put a little bit of the golden ochre just to darken it. And then the umber. Picking out the very darkest areas. So the area here under the chin is going to be a, another dark area of shadow. So here comes the ochre. It's going to be pretty dark this area. Right, I need to use my Derwent electric eraser to get rid of that little bit. And I'm going to brush away the fragments with my Faber-Castell drafting brush. There we go. So I'm now going to do the head. So I'm starting off by just doing an area in yellow and I'm leaving some areas white. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put in some more shading onto the face. So I'm putting an area of shading here. So I'm leaving this section white this section is going to be darker and that section is going to be light. This is roughly the sort of shading that you would find on a horse's face. So I'm assuming that they've reproduced it in the metal. And the darker shading is going to come up here over their eye and then fade out. Oh, that's put a bit of 
Just spot on there. I'm going to put a little cinnamon on that ear and chestnut. And this area under here is going to be really dark, so I'm going to go, go straight in with cinnamon. Chestnut. And umber. Then just his nose left. And this needs to be yellow as well. Let's go straight in with cinnamon here. Because this part's going to be very shadowed. And the nostril is going to be really dark. Oops, finish off with umber, so there's going to be quite a bit of umber right inside the nostril. And on the underside of the nose, it's going to be completely in shadow. I'm going to put a little bit around here for the nose shape. Under here for the mouth. Then accentuating the edge of what I guess would be the bridal area. Do it with cinnamon as well. Gradually fade it out. A little tiny bit of umber here, just to pick out the eye socket. the horn. It's going to have light all along the top, so I'll leave the very top bit white. Quickly do all of that yellow and then run down the bottom edge with cinnamon. Put a few lines up to follow the twists in the horn. Then the eye, I'm going to be completely different here. I'm going to do a little bit of black. This is ivory black 496. Then I'm going with the vermilion 060. I'm going to leave a bit in the center white as that's going to be shine in the eye. There we go. Now I'm going to do this, uh, I'm not quite sure what you'd call it. Is it a nut? Well, I'm going to call it a nut anyway. So I'm going to get a really a metallic effect on the nut by putting in some vertical and some horizontal lines in my shading. So I'm going to start off just laying down some flat colour. I'm going to use the ordinary yellow to start with. So I'm colouring it a bit like it was a pie and I'm leaving some of the slices of the pie white. And I'm using directional strokes going from the centre to the outside. So then I'm going to use the cinnamon and put some more vertical lines like this. So these are like little tiny slices of pie and a bit over here. Some bits of chestnut. Then 
Then I'm going to take the umber using a very light pressure. I'm going to put a few umber lines in. And I'm going to put in some lines going in the other direction. I'm going to do it in cinnamon and then I'm going to do it in umber. And that gives like a really shiny metallic effect. I'm going to put a bit more dark colour in there. There we go. Then the edge is a lot more straightforward. I'm just going to do the normal blend. I'm going to keep these bits at a lighter shade than the edge colour. Right, I think what I'm going to do now, as I've shown you the sort of principles of how I do it, I'm going to go on and um, speed colour some more of the gold areas so you can see how I do it. Now what you want to do, just make this comment while I'm colouring, to make your image look really 3D, you want to make sure that on every single one of these joints, you put dark colour, darker shade along the joint to make them look more three-dimensional. So it wants to be a darker shade than the shading that you've done round it.
Right then, now that I've coloured this section of the unicorn, I'm now going to show you that you can use this same technique with other shades to give different metallic finishes. So what I'm going to do is colour the inside part, so this section and this section, to look like steel. So I'm going to be using some grey shades of pencil to do that. Um, and I was also thinking, I mean, the reason I thought of doing this was that by including a contrast with the darker colours, it's going to make the gold stand out more and look brighter. So it's a very similar technique to what we've just done with the gold colour. I'm using from light to dark shades of grey and I'm going to start with the lightest. So I'm starting with this section. I'm using Steel Grey 004. And as we've done with the yellow, I'm going to put on a layer of the light colour. I'm, I'm actually going to do these uh, bits gold. So I'm leaving those. So again, I'm thinking about what areas are going to be shadowed. And the light source is going to be a bit different because this section is inside the unicorn. Probably the lightest part is going to be this area here, whereas the edges here and here are going to be shadowed because they're inside the unicorn's body. So I've done the lightest shade, now I'm using this, the next darkest, which is Mouse Grey 006. I don't know why, I always think that Mouse Grey should be lighter than Steel Grey. I'm pretty much covering this section with the Steel Grey. But in this section, I'm going to leave the bottom edge lighter because it's going to start having the light hitting it. Then greyish black, 008. I'm doing a smooth blend here. And then I'm going to take my ivory black. I'm going to colour these edges. And I'm doing that to give a three dimensional effect. So these pipes are going to be shadowed from the bottom. So I might leave them looking quite light actually along the top. So this is with the steel grey again. Uh, the, the bottom section, so the top part is going to be pretty light. So putting on some steel grey, the very light touch, which I'm gradually going to make dark by increasing the pressure and the layers. So greyish black, I'm just going round the nuts to make them a little bit lighter so they stand out. And then right at the bottom, a touch of ivory black. There, you can see we're getting the effect of shiny metal again, just with using the, uh, the pencils. The cork here, I'm going to do with the pie slice method again, that's what I call it. Now, this section here, in between the pipes, I'm going to do that section very dark because I think that is further down inside the unicorn. So I'm actually going to colour it um, straight away, the greyish black. 
So I'm actually using circular strokes here because I want it to be quite a uniform darkness. I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take the black and I'm going to put black onto the areas where I think are going to be in the deepest shadow down here. So I'm going around the edges as well to make them stand out a bit more. I just want to make absolutely sure that the background here is darker than the pipes so they stand out. I'm just going to sharpen my pencil. Here we go. You can get such a lovely sharp point with these Pablos. I'm going to go in and do the... Oh, it's broken off a little bit. It's really dark, so the cogwheel stands out. There, you can see it much more clearly now. Pipe, accentuated. There, so that's that section done. Hopefully you can see that the contrast with the darker metal is making the gold look even brighter. Now I'm going to do this section in the steel effect as well. So I'm picking up my lightest colour and I think the light's going to be hitting round about here. But I'm pretty much going to colour all of this tubing in with the light grey and then bring out the light effects with the darker shades. So again, with this section here, I'm going to do the background dark like this one. So I'm going to start straight away with the greyish black. and then the black. As this is the ivory black again, you can see this is a really 
dense, strong shade of black. In fact, black, you might not expect it, but black actually comes in loads of different shades. If you've got a black sheet of cardboard or something and you try and get another one in the same shade, it's really difficult. Right then, now I've coloured the front half of the unicorn, so hopefully you've got a really good idea now of how to use the technique. So what I'm going to do, I've actually got another copy of this design that I've already coloured. So I'm going to move this one out of the way and I'm going to replace it with this one so that you can see how I've coloured the rest of the design. I've used exactly the same technique, I've just expanded it and coloured the back legs and the tail of the horse. So that hopefully will give you a good idea about how to carry on and finish it. And what you can see I've done here, if I just point, I have in a few places used shading to give a bit of shape so I've put in a bit of shading there, which gives a kind of angle there that isn't in the original design. And again, look, I've put in some extra lines here and here. And also going round here, I've put in some extra lines because what I'm trying to, the impression I'm trying to give there is that these are all slightly different is that each section will have been shaped slightly differently. So I haven't shaded each section exactly the same. And again, I've put dark shading under all the joints and bolts to make it look more three-dimensional. So there we are, all finished. All the colors that I've used in this video are listed down below in the description box. So just to remind you, this design was from Colouring Heaven issue 97, which is on sale now. So I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on future ones.